So today I'm going to string my Muscle Power 100 racket. To string the racket, I'm going to use this cheap Ashway string, Micro Power XL. It's really durable. It's got a 0.73 millimeter gauge. Instead of a spool of string, you have a string set like the one pictured here. You can just cut the set in half and use one half for the vertical mains and the other half for the horizontal crosses. So the mains for the strings are going to be the vertical strings up and down. Prep the rackets. I find the center. Usually there's maybe a small dot here at the top. Or you can look for the, the big grommets here. Those are the shared string holes. And you can count how many grommets to the other side and then take half of that and that will be the center. So for this racket, it has this one little dot here by the top, right here. That's the center. So I want to put down one string to the left of it, one string to the right. It's good for one side. Now the other side. So here we're all done prepping the, prepping the racket before we string it. There was one thing I forgot to mention before you start stringing the racket and prepping it. The first thing you should do with all the rackets that you string is you want to inspect the frame to make sure there's no cracks or anything before you put the racket in the machine under tension. If there's a crack in the frame somewhere, it's possible that when you put the racket under tension, it'll snap up when you're trying to string it. What you're looking for mostly is cracks near the grommet. If there's just a small crack here on the side that's not all the way to the inside of the grommet, then usually you can kind of get away with it if it's a you know a higher end racket, the material's better. But definitely if you see a small hairline crack here that goes into the grommet, it's going to be pretty much a, a fatal sign for the racket that it can't be strung again. You take the two pins top and bottom brace, put it in the middle, all the way up to the top, top one first, push it in and lock it in, pulling down this lever, make sure it's pretty tight, and do the bottom one too. down, tight. So there's a little lever here on the bottom here, bottom here underneath the swiveling table. It controls how far this arm portion uh, goes up or down. I'm going to use pull it back a little bit and then tighten it. Now that we've kind of braced the racket with these two, these two points, when we, string the when we string the mains and apply tension, the racket's going to want to kind of compress this way. So the brace here, here will prevent the racket from collapsing inwards when we put the tension vertically on the racket. There's other types of machines too. This one's a two-point bracing machine. Some of the newer ones are maybe four points here and here, or six points, top, bottom, two and two. It's a bit of an older one, but for Batman it's okay. As far as the stringing goes, you want to use these sliding clamps here. You don't want to use a these Y clamps. They're not going to hold tension. It'll slip. The string will slip pretty easily. So before we start I always double check three things. Top is braced, bottom is braced, and the sliding the arm here is braced as well. So if any of these things things are missing, you can pot potentially break the racket. Um, so the way the stringing works is that you have one clamp hold one end with the machine. You're going to pull at a certain tension and then clamp it with the other clamp. And the, amount, the string that's between the two clamps is going to hold that tension. So what you do is, after you hold uh, one, one clamp, you pull the other string and then move the clamp. 
So you keep adding more and more string sections with a certain tension. And when you tie it off at the end, all the strings will have that tension. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to string halfway to the outside for the mains and then do the other half afterwards. So I do all the mains first. I use two sets of string, one set for the vertical mains and another set for the crosses, the horizontal strings. So let's get started. Clamp here, work this way, so I'll pull on this string with certain tension. For this racket, I'm going to use 22 pounds, so set the machine here, it's the right tension, and here, the racket in this little, the uh, racket string into the channel here, pull it back, so this string here that we just pulled has the correct tension. Do a double check here. This string does have the tension. So that's good. The top one. string one by one. Then the last one, I use the hole by the edge of this, this clamp to tie off. Just do a simple knot. So loop on one side, pull the string underneath the other side of the, the string, pull it through, and then it'll do a simple knot. One more thing is that these tails here, I don't cut them off until the very end. If I make a mistake, I can pull out the knots, hopefully, and then still save the string. So we've done all the strings here have the same tension. Let's do the other side. Now that we're done with the mains, next thing to do to cut out more string, do the crosses. Do the same thing as before, tie a knot up here, just go this way. Once you have the knot, you can start weaving the string across the mains, alternating above and below each vertical string. The easiest way to do this is to pull the string out to their slack, then pinch the tip of the string from above and below the racket with your index fingers. Then pull the string horizontally to the other end, alternating over and below the next string. Use the awl here to move the string as I pull it through, so there's not wear across one part of the string. After pulling the string to the other side, you can tension the string immediately or continue weaving the excess string. I personally prefer weaving all the excess string because I can weave faster without the clamp in place under the racket. If you're having trouble getting the string through one of the shared holes, you can try using needle nose pliers to guide the string through. If that doesn't work, you can use the awl to adjust the existing string or widen the grommet.
Now I'm done weaving as much string as I can through the crosses. Start pulling the tension. There's different ways to weave the crosses. Some people just weave one to one side, pull the string, and just go one at a time. I like to do as many as I can because I think it's a little bit easier to weave when I have don't have to worry about the clamp getting in the way. So after I weave through all of them, I check for the misweaves. I go up and down one of these main strings on the side. See if it goes up, down, up, down, alternating. It's not a perfect uh, system, but I can usually catch like 99% of the errors just by going up and down these two strings on both sides. It won't, it'll catch if there's one error, but it won't catch if there's two. Alright, looks good. Let's get started. Tension. Get the clamp as close to the frame as you can. Another thing that I'll do before I pull the string, I'll push it into the other string so when it pulls, it's straighter. Pull it, it just pulls out that way straight. So it's really up to you how far you want to string at the bottom, like before, so that you're not really going to hit, you know, pretty much past here. The strength's always going to be here and up. So you can even stop maybe here. Um, the way I do it though is if I have two knots on one side, I'm going to balance it out with two knots on the, on the other side. So I have a knot here and here. I want to tie off on this side. So there's two knots on this side and two on this side, so it's balanced. Again, the same thing, it's just a simple knot. You make a loop on one side, string underneath the one you're tying around, pull it through the loop, like this. Like before, I double knot it, make sure it stays. Sometimes you'll have really broken, wide grommets, and it's possible the knot can get pulled through. Take the clamp off, last check for all the, the weaving to make sure there's no misweaves, up and down, these two mains, look up and down, see there's no up ups or down downs, which indicates a misweave. So it looks pretty good, one last thing to strain out the strings, use the awl, go up and down the strings to make sure they're even, right now they're a little bit off. Looks pretty straight, strings look pretty good. I'll take off the brace. 